Bad on Bears fans, another edition of the Chicago Bears podcast coming your way. Pat, the designer here, got to sit here and talk about why the scales are finally tipping in the Bears' favor. We're going to look at this number one overall pick and the history at the quarterback position brought to us by Dave Kludge. Uh, broke down some very, very interesting numbers on why this may finally be the time for the Chicago Bears. Posted that, that over on Twitter back in January, and I think that now it speaks more to the conversation and as always is fun to do on a solo episode i get to speak to some of the listeners who like to go at me in the comments so we're gonna have a lot of fun on today's episode all that more in today's episode of the chicago bears podcast hit that like button subscribe to the page leave that five star review y'all know what to do let's jump into this boys let's jump into it because finally it feels like the Chicago Bears have started to get things right. And I saw this over on Twitter, a literal breakdown of the success of quarterbacks taken number one overall. We've had about 20 in the last 30. We've had actually 20 in the last 30 years. And the benchmarks that he set out to say, okay, what is success? What is not success for some of these quarterbacks? He talked about how success is an arbitrary term and can have a lot of different definitions. So he chose these five benchmarks, 4,000 passing yards in a season, 30 plus touchdowns in a season, 80 plus career starts, winning a playoff game, making a Pro Bowl. The quarterbacks that are on this list in that time frame, Drew Bledsoe, Peyton Manning, Tim Couch, Mike Vick, David Carr, Carson Palmer, Eli Manning, Alex Smith, Jam I love Jamarcus Russell. Jamarcus Russell, ladies and gentlemen. Matt Stafford, Sam Bradford, Cam Newton, Andrew Luck, Jameis Winston, Jared Goff, Baker Mayfield, Kyler Murray, Joe Burrow, Trevor Lawrence, and Bryce Young. Before we even get to the numbers, though, listen to the names on that list that I just gave you. Listen to the names on that list that we just broke down. There are certain ones on there that you can say the talent level was terrible. There are certain ones on there that you look at and you can go, right, uh, Tim Couch, ah, tough. You know what I mean? David Carr. I think David Carr had all the talent in the world. Getting sacked 70 times in a season does not help you win games. Um, Jamarcus Russell. Jamarcus Russell shot, him, shot himself in the foot, right? That's, that's, he, he, he was a self-inflicted problem uh, uh, for his team. Sam Bradford, man. Right, maybe there's some guys in there where you look at kind of like that, where they're just the mad guys or they're just the okay guys. Baker Mayfield, right? Kyler Murray, but you still see talent in those guys. Sam Bradford, maybe not even on the same level as a Baker Mayfield or Kyler Murray, but at a minimum, you're sitting there looking at these names and you're like, there's a lot of names on there of guys who have had a level of success in the NFL. And some of these guys, a high level of success in the NFL. Some of these guys, the highest level of success in the NFL, right? When you look at a guy like Matt Stafford, now he did not do it on his original team by winning the Super Bowl. But again, that speaks more to Detroit than it does to Matthew Stafford a lot of times. But then you start to look at some of the numbers that come along with it. I thought his benchmarks were really interesting. Quarterbacks drafted number one overall in that time, the 20 that I just read you, 4,000 plus yards, 70% of those quarterbacks have hit that metric. 30 plus touchdowns, 45% of quarterbacks have hit that metric. 80 plus starts, 81% of quarterbacks have hit that metric. Playoff wins, 70% of quarterbacks have hit that metric. Being a pro bowler, 70% of the quarterbacks have hit that metric. And here's where I think that this gets really interesting for the Chicago Bears, especially starting things off by going out drafting Caleb Williams in year one of this whole thing. Look at the teams that these guys went to. Look at the setups that most of these guys went to. Maybe there's a couple in there where you feel good about, right? Andrew Luck probably went to the best setup out of anybody in that, in that list of names. But you're seeing success throughout this list. And they're not starting off where Caleb Williams is starting. They're not starting off with Keenan Allen, DJ Moore, Gerald Everett. Cole Komet. I don't know why I paused on Gerald Everett right there. Like that was the heavy hitter in that. Cole Komet. 
DeAndre Swift, Roshan Johnson, Khalil Herbert, right? A wealth of weapons. They're not starting off with that. Oh, and by the way, also the possibility of adding a weapon in the first round, possibly a Roma Dunze, uh, or maybe adding an offensive line, adding something else to help the quarterback get better. They're not starting off with that. And so it feels to me that, yes, the numbers seem to be finally in the Chicago Bears favor with taking this number one overall pick. And when you when you sit there and look at Caleb Williams' game, when you look at a breakdown of his game, when you start to see this young man and what he's able to do on the field, I think you've also built a roster that maybe hides some of the things that you look at and say, Maybe that's a deficiency on his part, right? A uh, little bit of big play hunting, maybe holding on to the ball uh, uh, at times where he should get he should get rid of it because he's looking for the big throw. Guess what? I can look for the big throw when I got Keenan Allen and DJ Moore on my team. They're down there somewhere. We've seen that with Justin Fields. How many times the catch radius on these guys, right? When you have opportunities to bring players in that don't limit a guy's ability to okay, maybe he makes a mistake, but actually. They enhance what the outcome of the mistake can be in a positive direction. You, you look at Ryan Poles, and to me, it's just like, put the crown on him, man. King Poles came to play. I love seeing these numbers because this, to me, tells you that everybody, at least to me, it tells me everybody on this list, for the most part, outside of a couple of guys that you may feel are busts. And there's question marks on a couple of these here, right? Bryce Young, situation. Hasn't been in the league long enough to really do anything, but look at the situation. He went to an absolute dumpster fire that got gasoline poured on at the time he walked in the building. Trevor Lawrence, y'all know my feelings on Trevor Lawrence, right? I I think that he's a little under-talked about for a first overall pick, and that tells you all you need to know. But as you start to go through this list of quarterbacks, you start to see that these guys were able to overcome those situations because it seems like there is a level of talent there, but also that these teams were helping to put their quarterbacks in good spots to succeed. When I look at a guy like Eli Manning, right? Eli wasn't a, it wasn't a, oh my God, thrill here. It wasn't like, this is the answer. It was, this is a young man that we think is going to be able to take some really good strides and we have to build around him. We've done the building around part. You're building around where the talent already is. That's what I love that the Bears are doing here. That's why, to me, along with all of these numbers of of the quarterbacks that you can draft, the quarterbacks that you can bring in with the number one overall pick, the style of quarterbacks that you can draft and bring in, You're pairing that up with building the team around them and allowing them to still grow into that player. That, to me, tells me all I need to know about why this situation has such a high percentage of chance to be successful and why I think, my God, am I going to say the quarterback position may be solved here in Chicago. Success is not just one guy's one guy coming here to be the savior. I don't want to see Caleb Williams have to come in here and deal with what Justin Fields had to deal with and have to be Jesus Christ on a, on a football field. And Ryan Poles didn't want to see that either, which is why you see the moves he's made. Even when you talk about, like I said, some of the guys who maybe have missed or are bust by the standards that that uh, Dave set out here. You talk about Bryce Young. You talk about Demarcus Russell or Jamarcus Russell. Talk about David Carr. You're talking about Tim Couch. Think about the situations. Jamarcus Russell was the he he created a good chunk of that situation. But David Carr and Bryce Young to me, think about the situations. Why are they bust? Why can't they play? Can't get the ball out. You got to play faster. You got to play better. You got to figure it out. And how about you block? This is a very, very promising situation. And even the numbers would speak to the Chicago Bears being in a great situation here with the quarterback finally. And thank God that they're finally in our favor because, I mean, when you start to – I think what's interesting about this as well is that when you start to look through some of the other uh, numbers, and and we'll have uh, 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 the link kind of 
in the in the description so people can find it and go read through the entire thing that he put together. It's a really, really interesting piece. Or maybe I'll just tweet it out because um, it's a really, really interesting piece. And I think it speaks more to having the number one overall pick now and knowing that we're taking the number one overall pick. Because he tweeted this out back in January and the questions were still out on, are we ge- are we keeping Justin Fields? Are we moving on uh, um, and, and going out and getting Caleb Williams? But I think this speaks to this now because Everybody was like, well, what if you take a quarterback later? What if you take a quarterback in a different position? As you read through it, you start to see the numbers drop off precipitously. Now, there are more quarterbacks taken at those spots than you get number one overall. So you're going to have a bigger market to select from. You're going to have a wider range to choose from when you start going through those numbers. But when you start to see how sure of a thing it seems like the first overall pick is, I mean, 70%, listen, I don't know how y'all got through uh, got through school, but 70% was a C for me. I, I mean, I passed. And some of these guys are C players, right? Kyler Murray's a C player. Baker Mayfield, C player. Right? They're not, they're not, we're not sitting there beating our chest for these guys around the league. But both of those guys would be the best quarterback to ever walk into the Chicago Bears. And both of those guys could thrive in the situations that Ryan Poles has built here. That's what has me so amped up for draft day coming. That's what has me so excited for draft day coming. Because I know the players that we're going to add in, the additions that we're going to make onto this team have the greatest opportunity to come in and just go, wow. This I, we, we talked to Yurko about this um, last week on, on the Lost episode. That's what we'll call that. Um, we talked to Yurko about this, and I asked him, you know, what's the difference when you say the speed of the game? What's the difference to adjusting to the speed of the game? And he kind of broke down, right? You have to be able to... But get to the point where by the time you hit the field, you're just reacting. There is no thinking. If you're thinking on the field, you already made your first mistake is what he said. There's no thinking. It's just reacting. You through practice, through training camp, through all of this, you should know what you're doing. The second you hear hut, hike, you're just reacting off of instinct. It should be second nature. And that's where it takes a second for you to catch up to that. This allows Caleb Williams, this team that we built, allows Caleb Williams to be late on some throws. It allows him to maybe take his time and go through his progression because there's options there. It, it, and, and you've improved on the offensive line. There is an allowance for Caleb Williams to come in and say, oh man, you know things are moving a little faster than I thought it is. I'm going to dump this down to the running back for the next couple of plays. Because you went out, you got guys with above 70% catch percentages on the season. Again, it's not one man coming onto the field and being the greatest quarterback that we've ever seen. It's one man coming onto the field and having the options to go out there and say, I can get this to whoever I need to, whoever's open, whoever gets to, whoever gets to their, uh, through their route the quickest. Because I've got the opportunity to say, dang it, I missed that. Oh, he's there. Boom, make the throw. And as you start to go through that, as you start to build that rapport, as you start to build things up, that's when all of a sudden that speed of the game starts to become second nature and you can read and react. Oh, by the way, you've got two of the best wide receivers in the NFL for a young quarterback to read and react with. DJ Moore is a proven success with young QBs. I mean, he's managed a thousand yards with some of the worst in the league. You know what he can do with a young quarterback on his team. Now you're adding Keenan Allen into that who... I mean, listen, Justin Herbert's best friend, right? Went on the field, went healthy, things like that. I just, I I look at, and and the the best part about this, right? The, The biggest number that stood out to me, and hit the like button, subscribe to the page if you agree. The biggest number that stood out to me was quarterbacks that started 80 games. Even the guys who aren't on the list, aren't on the list yet because they haven't been in the league long. Bledsoe started 80. Manning started 80. Vic started 80. Palmer started 80. Eli started 80. Alex Smith started 80. Matthew Stafford started 80. Sam Bradford, 80. 
Cam Newton, 80. Andrew Luck, 80. Jameis Winston, 80. Jared Goff, 80. Joe Burrow started 80. Joe Burrow, who's been running for his life for his entire time there, started 80. That tells me that you're not just getting guys. You're getting guys who are allowing you to be in positions to have longevity at the position. 81% of the guys on this list have started 80 or more games. You're getting guys who have the longevity at the position, who have an answer at the position. Now, Alex Smith, and, and I think some of these people will look at it a little bit different, right? Matt Stafford, Alex Smith, they're guys that didn't have the greatest successes uh, with the original team, right? They went to different teams. You, you probably think of Alex Smith more as a chief than you do a 49er. You definitely think of Alex Smith more as a lion than you do a ram even though he had his biggest success with the Rams. And so maybe you sit there and go, well, you know, the, these numbers are great, but it didn't happen with the original team. Well, that's too far down the road. <laughs> We're thinking too far down the road right there. Let's get this dude through his first game before we get him through, you know, game 80 on a different team. I think that this is an immense opportunity that shows a great foresight, great planning by Ryan Poles. And you're bringing a young man into a great situation that doesn't just allow him to have success in his first year that I'm going to be real with you could allow him to do some of the things on this list this season. 4,000 yard season should be attainable this season. Uh, 30 plus touchdowns. That would be a stretch for me. But. If he's what everybody is saying he is, the 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 next Andrew Luck, if he's what everybody is saying he is, is it really a stretch to think that with this offense, the next Andrew Luck or Andrew Luck couldn't get a 30-plus touchdown season? Maybe that's attainable. A playoff win. You got to get to the playoffs. Those may be lofty goals, but I don't know any team that's coming in here going, yeah, we're just trying to, you know figure out how to get to the wild card weekend. That's all. You know, we're just hoping that we can like stay in the conversation the entire time. Everybody wants to make the playoffs. Everybody wants to win a division, especially to start the season. And I'll tell you this, being the first overall selection, if he accomplishes just some of these, right? Say, say maybe he's just the 4,000 yard guy falls short of 30 plus touchdowns. Doesn't get a playoff win. He's going to the pro bowl. <laughs> He's the number one overall pick. It's Chicago. They're going to send him to, they're going to make sure that he ends up getting on a play. And so I just think that when you break it down, when you break down the history of the number one overall selection, the odds are finally in the Chicago Bears' favor. And I love that. I also love the fact that this podcast is brought to you by the Hard Rock Casino in Northern Indiana. Make sure that you guys get down there for some very, very fun Las Vegas style game in just 30 minutes from Soldier Field, exit six, right off of I-8094. Appreciate you guys for tuning in, showing love. Hit that like button, subscribe to the page. Leave a five-star review. Y'all know what to do. Let me know your thoughts on some of the numbers that speak to the history of the number one overall pick being a, a quarterback, I should say, being selected at the number one overall pick. And do you feel like the odds are finally in the Chicago Bears' favor? Now, we're going to keep this thing moving along, man, because I want to have our uh, a, 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 a me to you moment, our road to the draft moment brought to you by Toyota. Toyota, let's go places. This is me to you. Because throughout this entire draft process, there's been so much discourse on what the Bears should do in the draft, why the Bears should do this in the draft, why uh, uh, they shouldn't do this in the draft, why you should take the quarterback, why you shouldn't take the quarterback. There's been so much back and forth. And this all started with the Justin Fields thing. And it's gotten to a, it, it, it got to some toxic levels, right? It got to some toxic levels on Twitter. Thank God Twitter's died down a little bit. But on this road to the draft, there's been a lot of shots taken out here. And I don't get to do this when I have my co-hosts on because 
you know, we're, we're focused on whatever the topic at hand is. But I want to address some of the things that I've, I've been uh, reading in the comments. I usually address them in the comments as well. Address some of the things that I've been seeing in the comments that, uh, that just don't make sense to me if you're really a fan of this team. Right? That just, they, 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 they don't show logic. And I think that we're a very, now I think things got a little scary out here, uh, but I think that for the most part, the overwhelming majority of fans are very logical fans. I think that we are a smarter fan base than most, which is why when you hear a lot of stuff that these guys just go out there and say on some of these national platforms on TV and stuff like that, right? When, when, when you hear uh, um, people go at the Bears like, oh, who's my favorite? Colin Cowherd. When you hear Colin Cowherd attack the Bears, Right. And you're just like, you have no idea who half the players on the Bears are. Why are you coming at us? I think that Bears fans are smart enough to deal with that. But there is a portion of the fan base. Oh, that portion. You know what portion I'm talking about. Those fans that want you to stand on your opinion no matter what happens. Those fans that want you to sit there and scream to the heavens and stay on your side of the boat no matter what happens. You wasn't with us shooting in the gym. The number one thing that I keep seeing in these comments. Oh, my God. Pat was such a Justin Fields fan. Now, all of a sudden, he's singing the praises of what Caleb Williams can be for the Bears. How is he? He's such a flipper. He's flipping his opinion on what Caleb Williams can do for the Bears. Let's talk about it. I always said that Caleb Williams was talented. The entire time, if you listen with your ears and not with your biases, you would hear that. I always said that Caleb Williams was a talented quarterback. I always said that Caleb Williams had things that he did better than Justin Fields. I always said that I would ride with whatever decision Ryan Poles made, but that I feel like you can plug more holes and build for the future of this team if you stick with Justin Fields. Well, guess what happened? Justin Fields got traded. He's not a bear. He does not impact the bears. He does not help the bears. Doesn't mean I don't wish him success out in Pittsburgh, but we're talking about the Chicago bears. I don't know if y'all know this or not, but there's, there's a name right here. Chicago bears podcast It's right there. We're talking about the Chicago bears. And so I'm not flipping my opinion when I speak on what the young quarterback Caleb Williams can do for the Bears coming into this season. I'm not flipping my opinion when I put high expectations on the number one overall pick. For the love of God, this is the only city that you can sit there and go to where people are going to be like, well, you're expecting way too much from the number one overall pick. Nobody's amazing right away. Well, listen, he's the number one overall pick. He should be pretty good. He should be able to figure it out a little bit. Right? I should expect less from him. What 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 should I expect? Should I expect Mitch Trubisky numbers? Is that what we're expecting from the number 1 overall pick? Should is Mitch Trubisky numbers? No, my expectations are high because Ryan Poles' expectations of this pick are high. Why do we know that? Because he refused to trade it. When teams called, he said, no thanks, we're good. He was willing to move on from a young quarterback who was already in the building, who, yes, you did have to pay, but you got rid of him for absolutely nothing. A ham sandwich minus the ham. And so, yes, when I speak on Caleb Williams, I speak on Caleb Williams with some high expectations, but it is not to trash Caleb Williams the second he gets here. That, that, that is not the reason to call out or, or to uh, uh, um, go out there and put these expectations on him. Mugs are so stuck on. They're just putting these expectations on this guy because they can't wait to see him fail. Why would I want to see him fail? He's my quarterback now. To the, the, the fact that there's a faction of you that wanted to see Justin Fields fail is the most confusing thing in the world to me because I ask you, are you rooting for this team? 
Now Caleb Williams is coming. I want to see Caleb Williams be the most successful quarterback in Chicago Bears history. I want to see Caleb Williams take the... You know what my dream scenario is? Honestly, my dream scenario for Caleb Williams. And I've said this a couple of times over on the breeze, but I think this is a great place to bring it here. My dream scenario for Caleb Williams is that he's so successful in year one that people don't want to give him the credit, that they Brock Purdy Caleb Williams. My dream scenario for Caleb Williams is that he's so successful in his first year that people look at the Bears team that Ryan Poles has built and they say, well, of course he's successful. He's got Keenan Allen. He's got DeAndre Swift. He's got uh, uh, DJ Moore. He's got Cole Komet. He's got all of this talent. He's got one of the elite offensive lines. He's got one of the best defenses in football. How can you not be successful? That's my dream scenario because you know what that leads to? That dude goes to the Super Super Bowls more times than not. Remember Pat Mahomes was so good that everybody just said, well, of course he's good. He's got Tyreek Hill. Y'all remember that? Well, when you got Hill and Kelsey. I remember that. Remember uh, in this season, and somebody that I love, would love to have on the show, but Stephen A. Smith said that uh, uh, all of um, uh, uh, Tua's the reason that Tua was leading yards and stuff like that is because he's basically just throwing five-yard hitches that are going for 90 yards this season. I want that. Those are the conversations I want people to have about the Chicago Bears. So get off of this weird, you have to stick with what your opinion was before decisions were made because guess what? When information changes, you have to change what your what the information that you're putting out to the public. I can't sit here and talk about how Justin Fields leads a team to the future if Justin Fields ain't here to lead the team to the future. So I got to talk about how Caleb Williams leads the team to the future. Doesn't mean that I don't think that Justin Fields could have done it, but now it means that Caleb Williams has the opportunity to, and I'm going to root for him, and I'm going to cheer for him, and I'm going to ride with him. Just like I rode with Jay. Just like I rode with Mitch. Just like I rode with, uh, well, I didn't really ride with Glenn, and I ain't going to lie to you. I cheered for him when he was in there, but it wasn't a lot to cheer for. It was a, it was a very quick moment. It was very quick. Um, I mean, just like I rode with Rex. When Rex turned into sexy Rexy, you couldn't tell me nothing. I knew we were going to win the game. Just like I rode with Orton. Just like, I mean, like, what quarterback do you want me to stop at? There's like 64 in the span of the last 20 years. So get off of this weird energy. I I don't want you to cheer for Caleb Williams. You can't be excited about Caleb Williams. You can't speak on what Caleb Williams is going to do. You can't set expectations on Caleb Williams because I wanted Justin Fields to be here. Guess what? Ryan Poles didn't. Shout out to Ryan Poles. Here we go. There's a new kid coming to town. I just gave you the numbers on why he should be successful this season. I'll sit here and tell you that he should be the greatest quarterback in Chicago Bears history, his rookie season. And I'll sit here and I'll be cheering for him in the stands and I'll be cheering for him on this podcast and I'll be evaluating his play and breaking down what we see and we'll be doing all of that just like we did for Justin Fields, just like we did for Mitch. Nothing changes. Because I'm cheering for the jersey in the city. I'm not cheering for the individuals. There's some individual players that I rock with, but like, I, listen, I only, I, I'm the guy, I only buy Hall of Famers jerseys because I'm so jaded with jerseys in this city. Nah. Hey, listen, you, you got to make the haul before I go out and get your jersey. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I know you're great, but like, you might not be. That's how I feel about almost every player at this point especially over the last five years here, right? You know how many Levine jerseys are out here in the wild now? 50% off. (laughs) And he's still on the team. He still plays for the Bulls right now. 50% off. So let's try and like kumbaya all of this back together, man. And and I'm going to be real with you. I'm going to speak to the other side as well because we also hear this. This is the dumbest thing in the world to me as well. Well, well, Justin Fields didn't get a fair shot here, so I'm not going to cheer for Caleb Williams. He's going to have to do a lot to win me over. And What are you you rooting for? Are you rooting for his failures? Because now you sound like the other side. 
Why are we rooting for failures of dude that are putting on navy blue and orange? Why are we doing that? Why are we hoping that guys fail? Listen, I'll tell you the number one thing in the world that I say every game, prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. Make me have to eat my words. Make me have to go back on everything that I've ever said that may have been negative about you. I say that about Valus Jones every time he's back there to return a kick. I'm praying these rules help Valus this year. These new kickoff rules. I'm, oh my God, please help this brother. Let him like catch the ball. They take all, he just, I hope he breaks Devin's record this season. Because that means my team is successful. So if you're still holding on to the whole Justin Fields didn't get a fair shake, what if he had gotten a shot with this team? Let that go, because that's over with. He can't, he can't get a fair shot with this team. You know what he can get? Pittsburgh some wins. You got you to gotta accept the fact that there's a new era coming to Chicago, and it seems like it's a pretty freaking good era. I got people sitting here te- telling me I'm not going to watch the Bears this year. I'm off the bandwagon. I heard this yesterday. I'm off of it. First off, you're lying. Nobody, right? The football season comes around. We know. We know. You're, you're going to watch. But you're also sitting there, and, and you're going to jump off the bandwagon now? So let me get this straight. And I'm just saying, like, for people in my age group, you watched Rex's offense. You watched Orton's offense. You watched Cutler's offense. You watched Glennon's offense. You watched Mitch's offense. You watched Justin's offense. And you see the team that they put together out there to go out to war at Soldier Field every single Sunday, and you getting off the bandwagon now? I had people sit there just like, I got to buy my Justin Fields Steelers jersey. What? What are we talking about here? Are we Bears fans or are we not? Because y'all trying to turn this into some like political polarizing hate thing where you can only be on one side or the other. No, you know what side I can be on? The side that holds up the Lombardi trophy. I think that's quite a few players that stand on that stand, that stage. So that's the side I'm on. Let's get to that. And if Caleb Williams gets me there, guess what? I'm going to be beating my chest for him, uh, 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 screaming in excitement. And guess what? If Caleb Williams isn't the guy, whoever the next guy is going to be, although I'm not going to lie, if Caleb Williams ain't the guy, we may be cursed, guys. It may be. (laughs) If it's not Caleb, we may be cursed. I'm not going to lie to you. Like, there's, there's witchcraft afoot is what I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, Papa Bear had to piss somebody off if Caleb don't work. Um... But if Caleb Williams don't work, I'm going to be cheering for the next guy. I've cheered for every single backup that's come in because I'm a Bears fan. That's what it comes down to. And these comments on like, oh, he wasn't on. He, he wasn't on our side. You wasn't with us shooting in the gym in the beginning. That's weird energy. You're, you're trying to like keep Caleb. You're trying to gatekeep a quarterback. Like, <laughs> what is that? Like. I was going to, I legitimately was going to like start putting up individual comments of people, but I want to put y'all on blast, but I will be in the comment section because I know y'all going to have something dumb to say on this one too. Um, there's always those people and there's always those people that you just can't reason with. And I love being in the comments going at y'all. So tune in with us down in the comments as well. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know what side you're on right now with this whole, uh, Caleb Williams coming to Chicago thing. Um, you know, let, let me know, uh, uh, um, what your thoughts are on the likelihood that the number one overall pick at quarterback will work for the Chicago Bears the way that it has in the past. I appreciate you guys for tuning in, showing love. Hit that like button, subscribe to the page. Lead a five-star review. Y'all know what to do uh, for me. It's just me today. For Pat the Designer, I'm Pat the Designer. Y'all stay safe out there, Chicago. Bear done. One love. Ryan, we're almost there. Peace.